Hello, and welcome to today's book chat. So today I'm going to be talking about the novel Women Talking by Miriam Taves. So I picked up this novel as it was the choice of a book club that I was recently invited to join. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. There's a lot more to say, but, but that's how I'll start. So this novel was actually based on true life events. So this is pretty unusual for me, but I'm actually going to read something from the start of the novel because there's a chance that for some readers out there, just hearing that may be enough to say, you know what, I don't want to hear anymore. Um, and so I'll, I'll give that to save your time. But uh, so a note on the novel. Between 2005 and 2009, in a remote Mennonite colony in Bolivia named the Manitoba Colony, after the province in Canada, many girls and women would wake in the morning feeling drowsy and in pain, their bodies bruised and bleeding, having been attacked in the night. The attacks were attributed to ghosts and demons. Some members of the community felt the women were being made to suffer by God or Satan as punishment for their sins. Many accused the women of lying for attention or to cover up adultery. Still others believed everything was the result of wild female imagination. I'm going to skip down a bit. Women talking is both a reaction through fiction to these true life events and an act of female imagination. So from that, you can tell that the, the content of this novel is fairly serious. Um, the entire novel takes place, well, not the entire, probably about 90% of the novel takes place in a hayloft and it's simply these women having a conversation about what to do um, and it's narrated by a male protagonist who is taking notes of this meeting of this conversation because none of the women are literate and so it's presented that they want a record for for future for for whatever it could be for, just, just to have someone know and hear their words. So as the narrator is going through the story, he's also translating, which I think plays a large effect on the novel in that these women aren't speaking an English language. I think it's called Malachna, but the language um, has no written text. So the, so the narrator has to translate their words as he's writing. And I think because of that, the writing in a way is very simplistic. Um, not for the meaning or the ideas that it presents necessarily, but the way that those ideas are written about. Uh, as a result, well, not just because of that, there, there are probably many facets, but this isn't what you call a fast-paced novel. It's not gripping. Um, there were times when I wouldn't go so far as to say I was bored, but I just didn't have that pull or that urgency to continue, which I think is not necessarily a bad thing because that allows you time to pause and to reflect and to consider. Um, in the book club meeting that I had, a lot of uh, the other members weren't a big fan of this novel. And the main reason for that seemed to be that they felt that it was slow or they felt that it was boring. Um, and I get that uh, for sure. I think when a novelist an author writes, there's generally three main things that they're setting about to do, and that is to entertain, uh, to make the reader think, or to have them feel. Now, the best novels definitely would uh, accompany all three, but sometimes the author isn't even trying to do that. Often in genre fiction, they're just trying to entertain, and if there's feeling and emotion, that's great. And sometimes in literary fiction, it's more about just expressing that story for, for the art's sake or because of some idea or thought that the novelist wants to put across. And I think Miriam Taves in this novel is definitely leaning more toward the thinking. There, there's definitely some feels there too, but it's a novel that can make you question, to make you ponder, um, to just have you slow down for a moment. And I really enjoyed that. So. These women just sitting around and talking, and it's referenced in the book, it's a subtle revolution because they've never had this freedom before to think about what they're going to do, to make some life-altering decision for themselves. These decisions were always made for them. And as the novel starts, they need to decide between three possible choices about what they're going to do about these attacks. Um, the men are all out of the village for the time, and, the, and they, so they're they're racing with the clock to make a decision before they return, and the options are, and actually it has this neat little um, 
imagery in the book to kind of represent that. And I think, again, that goes to the fact that these women don't have words, and so pictures is what they need to deal with. So number one, the first option is to do nothing. Uh, the second option, if you can see there, is to stay and fight. And the third option, represented by a, a horse walking away, is to leave. Um, so I won't tell you, of course, what they did, but, but this act of choosing was the revolution. This act of choosing, in some way, is what the book was really about. They decide the three things that they need to do that determine their choices is that they have to make a choice that will protect their children. They need to make a choice that will keep the peace and honor their faith because that is a very strong part of who they are. And they need to make a choice that will allow them to continue this process of, process of thinking, which I thought was, was incredible. And the way that Taves expressed that was so meaningful and so memorable. Uh, the idea to live your life not being allowed to think. And women today, I think, well, see, I think, <laughs> we take that for granted that for much of history, our decisions were made for us. And for these women, even though it was set in the early 2000s, their decisions often were made for them. And again, I don't know how much of this is fiction. I don't know how much license Taves took. But the fact that these events happened and they were able to happen for so many years is enough to express that these women needed a change and they realized that. And, and I think that's so much where the beauty and the power of this novel comes through. Another thing that I really liked was that because the women didn't often have this time to or this ability to express their thoughts and the way they saw the world, there was such specificity of language in this novel. And, and the women would sometimes debate for almost pages about what was the right word to express whatever they were thinking or feeling or experiencing. And it was nice to sit back and think about the way that we use words. Now, I'm a person who's uh, very particular on specificity of language, and it drives my husband crazy sometimes. But words have meaning, and the words that we choose to use can have strong effects, not just on how we view the world, on how others view the world, on how others view us. And so that was really interesting and really compelling. And I will say, though I, though I did mention that this book is um, you know, not fast paced, it's a little slow. The last 10 to 15 pages, I was just going through it. And uh, Taves did an amazing job of having that urgency come through and that energy that the women had to decide, okay, this is coming down to the hour. We need to figure out what are we going to do? Yeah, so I could go on actually. Um, it's funny, it's kind of a novel that the more I talk about it, and the more I think about it, the more I love it. And I wouldn't be surprised, and actually I haven't done the research, maybe this has already happened, but I really wouldn't be surprised if Women Talking is um, going to be nominated or even winning some really big and prestigious literary awards. So if hearing this and if you stayed through this whoa full eight minutes and 30 seconds this is probably the longest book chat i've ever done um if you've been captivated this long then probably this is a book you would want to pick up so women talking a novel by marion taves um also i really like you know cover and design love and anger i thought that was a really really cool choice that the uh, designer did for this novel. Uh, you can head over to my website, charlencar.com, where you can read a little bit more about my thoughts on the book. And also I have a little free offer there for you. Uh, for those who may not know, I'm a novelist myself. And I would say that my books are very different than what Taves is writing. But the idea of women expressing themselves, expressing uh, their feelings and trying to figure out their place in the world uh, is definitely representative, represented in my novels as well. So you may find a little bit of crossover there. Again, thanks. Uh, have a wonderful day and read on, my friend.